So my gaming rig is quite a beast. It has a GTX 1070 graphics card so it can play all of the latest games on ultra settings and it has a terabyte of storage so I can keep all of my music and videos in one place. The only slight problem is it's upstairs and I'm down here. Fortunately, technology is all about finding creative ways to be lazy. And as it would happen, there are a ton of different ways you can stream your PC to an Android device. That means you can access documents, it means you can play games, and you can do all this from anywhere in the house or even outside of the house. And it's much easier than you might think too. In fact, I'm gonna show you how you can do all that in just seven minutes. So yeah, in just seven minutes, I'm gonna show you how you can access any app or file on your PC via your phone. I'm gonna show you how you can stream Steam games so you can play The Witcher 3 from anywhere. I'm gonna show you how you can use your phone as a controller, a media controller, so you can pause and stop your playback. And I'm gonna show you how you can wake your PC from anywhere in the house or even outside of the house via an app. That's right, seven minutes. Let's go. So the first and most basic thing you're gonna to want to do is to stream your desktop to your Android device. There are a few apps that can help you do this, such as TeamViewer, but the one I'm gonna be recommending is called Splashtop Remote 2. So to get this up and running, it's actually very simple and easy. First of all, you need to take the host device, that's the computer, and you need to navigate to the website and download the streamer. Then on your Android device, you're gonna head over to the Play Store and you're gonna download the Splashtop Remote 2 app. And once that's all installed, open up the app on your phone and make sure it's also open on your PC and you should be able to see a list of all your devices on your home network. Click the one you want to connect to, and that way you can remote stream your desktop or even access the camera for a little bit of spying. So Splashtop Remote 2 is great for streaming a range of apps and media, but what about for gaming? For gaming, lag becomes more of an issue, and for that reason, you might want to try a different app called Remotra, or Remote, er, Remote and then R. This is basically an app that allows you to stream from Steam, so as long as a game is added to Steam or you installed it through Steam, then you'll be able to stream it straight to your device. Not only is it quicker and lower latency, but you'll also have access to on-screen controls or you can use an additional controller. So you will need a Steam account, but as long as that's installed on your computer, then the process is very simple to set up. In fact, it's very similar to Splashtop. You need to download the software on the host side, on the PC, and you need to get the app on the Play Store for your Android device. Once you've installed both those things, it's just a matter of connecting to the home network and then you'll see a list of your computers that are available through the app. Click the one you want to use, select the game from the game library, and you're good to go. Okay, so how about a different scenario? Let's say you're enjoying a bit of Netflix and chill on the sofa downstairs with your partner, and you're casting from your PC upstairs. You wanna pause it so you can go and make a cup of tea, but that means going all the way upstairs and hitting pause on the computer, and that is just far too much hard work. Wouldn't it be great if you could use your Android device to just pause, play, resume, skip, etc. Well as you might have guessed there is an app that will let you do this, it's called Unified Remote and setting it up couldn't be easier. In fact it's pretty much the exact same process as it has been for the last two. Basically you just need to navigate your PC over to the Unified Remote website and download the server on the host side and for the app you'll get that from the Play Store and install it on your Android device. Okay so we're doing pretty well but we haven't achieved full laziness just yet. Because at the moment, whilst we can control our PC from our phone, we still need to turn it on manually. We still need to go all the way upstairs, turn on the power button, and then come all the way back downstairs. And that is just not okay. Fortunately, there is a way around this, and it's called Wake on LAN. And basically what this means is that as long as your computer is plugged into an Ethernet port and in a low-powered state, it can listen out for a magic packet sent over the home network and use this as a trigger to turn on when we want it to. First of all, like I say, you're gonna need an ethernet connection. The computer needs to be plugged in to a wired internet connection. If you don't happen to have an ethernet port in the same room as your PC, don't worry, there is a way around this. You can use something called a power line adapter. I'm using one called TP-Link and it works just fine for Wake on LAN. You can even get a USB type C adapter for ethernet so that you can plug your smartphone straight into the wall for a much more stable connection. And this obviously is great for better performance when you're using something like Remotra. So to set this up on the PC side, first you need to boot into the BIOS. Once in there, you can normally find the setting to allow Wake on LAN fairly easily. It should be under security or advanced or something like that. Okay, next we're gonna need permission from Windows. To do this, you're gonna open up your device manager. Now expand the network adapters section. Right click on your network card and select properties. Then go to the advanced tab, then scroll all the way down and click enable 
on Wake on Magic Packet. Finally, click Power Management and then make sure you've ticked the boxes that say allow the device to wake the computer and only allow a magic packet to wake the computer. Once you've done all that, put the computer in sleep mode and then you're gonna head over and download a Wake on LAN app on your mobile device. Just install the app, open it up and you should see all the computers connected to your home network listed. Click the one you want to wake and if everything has gone well, your computer should boot up from sleep as if by magic, as if by magic packet. But some of you might be wondering if there's any way you can do this remotely. Let's say that you're in a coffee shop or at work and you realize that you've forgotten an important file that you need for the day ahead. So using the Wi-Fi in the coffee shop or your 4G connection, is there any way that you can wake your computer up back home and then send that file over via Dropbox or Gmail? Well, of course there is, otherwise that would have been a pointless bit of spiel. So this is gonna use something called port forwarding. And with port forwarding, what you're basically doing is sending a message to your router back home and your router is then forwarding that magic packet onto the computer that you want to wake. So to set this up, you're gonna to need to access the advanced settings of your router. Normally you do this by pointing your browser towards a specific address, and you should be able to find that address on the leaflet that came with your router. If you've lost this, and why wouldn't you have, then give your broadband provider a call because you might also need a password, or if you just need the address, then look online. So each of your devices have their own private IP addresses, and then your router has a public IP address, and that's the address that the outside world sees. Every now and then your router will change the IP address of the private devices on your network. And it does this via a process called DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Of course, if you want to wake up your device, then you can't have its address changing all the time because you wouldn't be able to find it. And that's why we need to set it a static IP. So find the DHCP section of your control panel, and then you're gonna want to set yourself a reserve rule for the device that you want to wake up. So find your device listed and then tick it. And then normally you'll just click add rule or something like that. And then you should see it listed with a static IP address and MAC address. And at this point, I also want you to write those down because you're gonna need them later on. Okay, and the next thing you're gonna to want to do is to set up the port forwarding. And this basically means that your router is gonna listen out for the specific message and it's gonna send that on to the correct IP address. So find the port forwarding section in this control panel and then enter the following details. So for the local IP address, you're gonna enter that IP address that you just noted down. For the local start port, end port, and external start port, end port, you're gonna enter nine. For the protocol, you're gonna select both. And where it says enabled, you of course want to set that to on. Once that's set up, you just need to find an app that supports WAN wall. I'm using one called wall on. So open up the app and then hit the plus button to add a new device. So for computer name, just use a computer name for your own reference. Under the MAC address, just use the MAC address that you wrote down earlier. Under router IP or host name, you're gonna use your public IP. And if you don't know what that is, then go to Google and search for what is my IP. It should be the first thing that comes up. For ports, you're gonna choose nine again, and then just click save and you're done. And with that done, you should now be able to wake your computer from anywhere. So hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please click like, please share it around. Hit that subscribe button if you want more videos like this and the bell button if you want to be notified. Let me know in the comments section down below what tools you use to control your PC from an Android device because there's many more out there. This is just some of my favorite choices. And of course, head over to androidauthority.com for we are your source for all things Android.